Hey, me, Grandpa. Like what you see? Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe then. Please touch my furs. So this is going to be an over-explained speedrun we're hoping to get under 10 minutes in the in-game timer. To be particular, if you don't have it on, you can turn it on in the settings. Timer display right there. Um, the other thing before you get started, we're going to be using Aspect of Hera for the bow. So you can load your cast into your attack. It's just really quick. Does tons of damage quickly. And the best speedrun builds are usually ones that start off really strong uh, right out of the gate. But maybe... You know, uh, and then by the end, hopefully you've picked up a few other things to keep up with the damage. So Aspect of Hera was something like Crush Shot. Starts off really high, but it's hard to actually for it to keep up. A lot of people will bring up Merciful End when talking about speedrun builds, but speed, but Merciful End starts off slow and weak and gets incredibly strong suddenly uh, when you get the Duo Boon actually up and running. So that's not worth it because even those first 15-ish chambers of the run are going to be much slower. So not recommended. Uh, if you're looking for other aspects or builds, I'd recommend Beowulf or Eris for the Rail are really strong speedrun aspects outside of Hera. The you know, other thing that I like to do in particular is I'm playing with an Xbox One controller on PC. For Hera and Beowulf, I like to rebind the cast button to left trigger. So I just don't have reload bound. I have the summon set to R3 and everything else is default after that, I do believe. So we got... We got uh, the, the, the Aphrodite's keepsake on. Let's go look at the mirror for y'all. We're going to use Meg's companion. Just tends to be the best. I could do anything. Let's see. For Hera, you definitely do Infernal Soul. You definitely do Shadow Presence. You will do High Confidence. I know a lot of people will think about Privileged Status since you're starting with Crush Shot. But it's just not really worth it if things don't go the right way. Um, Dark Foresight is always a must, and you probably do God's Pride here. The only dual boons that really help out a lot are Barrage Shot, and it might... There's a decent chance that it'll just never get up and running for a, a random run. What about Aspect of Demeter? I mean, it's fine. You, you can go as fast as you want with whatever aspect you want. Don't feel like you have to use this aspect, but if you're just looking for... to get the fastest time, uh, the three I listed are the ones I'd recommend. Heartrend? Not worth it. It's just not. Why is Dark Foresight a must? It's just way better than the other one. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it's called. I never use it. Dark Foresight is incredibly strong. You just get offered more boons, more palms, more gold, etc. All right, for the Pact of Punishment. You don't have to do this. You can definitely get under 10 minutes uh, with not using Force Overtime 2. But the more Force Overtime you have, the better it'll be. It makes enemies spawn faster. That's as simple as that. Uh, Extreme Measures 2 just makes the learning fight like a little bit better. The heads kind of clump up. You can deal better AoE damage to them. You don't use Tight Deadline because uh, not having Tight Deadline means that a Survival Room can appear in Tartarus and Survival Rooms pause the in-game timer. Other things that pause the in-game timer, Event Rooms like uh, Boldy, Eurydice, Patty, uh, the Survival Room, Thanatos Rooms pause the in-game timer, uh, shops and fountains do not pause it. You want all those things as much as possible, okay? Hmm. Yeah, you can get used to force over time, and this is a run where it's, it should not be extremely difficult. It might take you a few tries to get used to it, at least a little bit, right? It's not meant to be extremely difficult, and you're, you should be very overpowered by the end. Erebus rooms? Not in a speed run, no, absolutely not. Back. Under no circumstances will you be taking Erebus rooms when trying to get a faster time. Hey! I didn't see it, I swear. We got Epic Crush Shot. You just take it no matter what. You don't roll for rarity or anything like that. Unless you're really trying to drive down the time. Boom, there it is. Easy, right? So now you just load and shoot. You don't even go for power shots when you're in a place like Tartarus here. Because the enemies are too weak. Now remember, the timer does not pause. even after you clear a room. So you have to decide. So here's what I recommend you do. Grab the reward, stop, pa start pausing, and get used to this. Some people probably get a little annoyed when I do this, but you really got to play like that. So look, top right, timer's paused. Now you get to look at the, the doors and you can take your time to decide. Timer also pauses when you're picking boons. 
Why is weak valuable? Weak isn't valuable. Just the damage from Crush Shot is really, really strong. <clears throat> damage, the damage from Crush Shot is incredibly high. And it has an AoE effect, so it can potentially hit more than one enemy. So it's a speed run, so we kind of prize some gold here over health to start ourselves off. Chaos is incredibly good for speed runs because it means that you will not be fighting enemies. Instead, you'll just simply be walking through a chaos gate, right? And I'll explain that maybe when we get into the chaos gate, what I mean by that exactly. Yeah, so you definitely don't want the other room. But if the other room was listed as the shop or uh, Baldy, this decision would be a little more difficult. Uh, because those are also free rooms, as we call them. But let's just head into chaos here. As well. You do want to pay attention to your health and stuff. Which time we pause when you clear the room? Yeah, it's kind of strange that it doesn't a little bit, but oh well. Okay, timer's now paused since we're picking a boon here. That's actually a very strong boon for us. 34% not crazy high, but there's no negative because I don't use the special. You're not going to be using the special. We're loading the cast and shooting it, and that's going to be pretty much all of our damage. We hope for some supplemental damage from the attack and the hammers, but it's not a crazy high priority. So we need to talk about, when you when you look at your boons here, see how it says chamber four in the top right? You need to know that there's only a certain number of chambers before you see the end boss for each biome. 12 is the last enemy encounter in Tartarus. Uh, 22 is the last enemy encounter in Asphodel. 34 is the last enemy encounter in uh, Elysium. And that's always going to be the case. Uh, some minor exceptions out there, I guess. But we won't even bother discussing that. So, if you see Chaos instead of an enemy chamber, that still takes up a chamber count. Is it worth it the last chamber for the shop? So that's the exception where it would push it back. And if you're using the in-game timer, it might be worth it. Especially for a cast build, because Chaos can help with cast builds a lot. Since there's two boons that directly help you. Plus one cast and plus, plus cast damage. They're just really strong. We could talk about enemy types. Oh my god, take it easy on me, would ya? And uh, there's a difficulty rating for each. And that's what determines like what kind of enemies you get and stuff. But... I mean, it's kind of just luck of the draw, draw, draw. So there's really no controlling it anyway. We got a hammer here. All right. Okay, we got some good options here. You never do explosive shot. It's just not good enough. It's never really great. Uh, so twin shot and flurry shot are really good. Flurry shot's quite good um, for Hera in particular. That way, you don't even have to charge it. Flurry Shot I always find to be a little dangerous. This is actually... You could go either way. Yeah. You, you could definitely choose either one and not be wrong here in this instance. They're both very good. This literally doubles your damage. The shortened range is almost meaningless. Flurry Shot is kind of a nice thing that you don't have to pay attention to. So when we only have one exit, I'm just going to spam the, the exit button. Okay, so we're going to Meg here. Why are we going to Meg there? Well, the sneak fight can go on and on and on, potentially, if you miss on the first hit. The goal there is to, as soon as the sneak reappears after the first teleport, you summon the Meg and you shouldn't miss. Uh, it's worth it, because you don't need to Meg learny, really. You'll see. The sneak fight can be annoying, basically, in a speedrun. In that instance, it was not. All right, so Splash Dash. Splash Dash, very good. Whoa. We're kind of getting uh, some tough choices a little bit here. So you really want to palm the cast a few times. But you have to do Demeter here. Because Demeter has the second most powerful boon after our cast for this build. And that's, uh, and that's Snowburst. Come on, man. Try to use up, uh, utilize uh, Splash Dash best we can. Okay. Cast damage is online. Oh no, there's a slight bug there. I won't get into it, but I had to pick up my cast to do anything. Ugh. So you definitely roll these. You do got to be cautious about your rolls, but yeah, 100% we're rolling it. Ravenous well, eh, it's it wouldn't even be worth taking in this instance. You roll again because this is going to be. No burst is just massive. Aha! Ravenous will is a. Uh, very much so a, a settling boon. So now we kind of want to save loading in the cast until we're next to the enemies. 
there is some mild anti-synergy here between Splash Dash and Snowburst, right? Um, but it's not the end of the world. I think it's worth buying this Meg. We have quite a bit of gold. Uh, so looking in Caron Wells is really important, especially if you're doing a cast build. You can get a lot of Ixian to guarantee a Chaos Gate. You could get cast damage, you could get an extra cast. There's a lot you could actually get here. All right, so this is what we call, oh, okay. So we have Patty and the shop, but we want to go to the shop, partially because the door is just a little bit closer to us. We don't really want Ares. We probably just skip it over, honestly. Buy that health and it exit. Don't buy boons you don't really want for the build here. So Ares, Dionysus, Zeus, you don't really want them around. Kind of gets into what we call the god pool because you can only usually see four different gods in a run before the game stops showing them to you. And you don't do trials. Trials, you get a lot more enemies, and they're just useless. Not Sorry, they're not useless. Trials, you just get way too many enemies. Thanos is good. Pause the timer. Frank, do the special wouldn't be good? No. I don't even know what you mean. I like to hold on my rolls, especially after the first one. How do you know to roll hard? So you roll hard for the cast, and you roll hard for snow burst, and probably almost nothing else. It kind of depends what you already have going. It's possible I shouldn't have rolled so hard for Snowburst since we already had Splash Dash, which already provides us with some AoE, right? Hard to say there, but paid out. Okay. So there's a very mild thing in a Thanatos encounter. If you have a boon window like this, you want to leave it open until Thanatos leaves the room. Otherwise, you'll have to watch him leave. <sighs> All right. Premium Vintage versus The Call. This is actually kind of hard. Hmm. The Call, the, so Dio's Call is actually really strong. You just use it one segment at a time. Never build a full call with Dionysus or Zeus. It's a waste usually, especially Dionysus. It's quite a bit of damage. Vintage, we don't care about the health, but if the palm were to hit the cast, it would be really good. But I guess you wouldn't take the one out of three here. Strong stuff. That's the last one. We have one, two, three. We have four gods. We have Aphrodite, Poseidon, Dionysus, Demeter. So we actually can't see the god we want next, which is Artemis. I think we just take the free palm. Oh, what's that? What's in the well this time? The trophy hit the cast. Delicious. Yeah, about that. I think you do Splash Dash there. Okay. Now we're not using Privilege Status. Yeah, I guess Hello, I guess if you were using Privilege Status, you'd... I mean, you just really want Snow Burst every time, but it just depends how hard you're resetting here. Like, if your goal is simply to get under 10 minutes, you don't need to have all these boons. You want them all, but you don't need them all, really. There you go, boom. Wasn't there an Ares in the shop? Does it stay out of the pool since it skipped it? Stays out of the pool. If you do not pick them up, they are not in the pool. If you sell them after picking them up, they are still in the pool. Okay. Probably not gonna sell anything now. Got to keep going. Let me look at this. Little tempting to just go straight for Charons, but then we're definitely not getting uh Karen's keepsake to be precise. Then we're definitely not getting a Mirage shot. We're gonna go for Mirage shot since we already have Poseidon uh, in here. So we'll try to get that dual boom. We really, really need to palm the cast. This actually feels pretty bad. We're not gonna buy the yarn because it's really just gonna hit an Artemis core boon, like the attack, hopefully. So getting a higher rarity on that is just not really worth it here. There's a god in each door, and you want both of them. Is there are no way to get the other again? I mean, they can be offered again, but the one you do not choose is not necessarily in your pool. Yeah, it's just RNG. If you skip them, it doesn't mean they disappear forever necessarily. Forecast, four furious. 
So Hermes is pretty important here. There's a few really good things we could get. Kind of didn't get any of them. Don't get baited by an epic side hustle here. We really want either hyper sprint or at the very least quick reload. Probably hyper sprint mostly. Um, got anything else? Yeah, we kind of got scrammed. So I guess we'll settle for greater haste. The idea is to get rush delivery from Hermes, which increases your damage based on your move speed. There's Artemis. All right, all right. Did I talk about the mid shop? You're semi, not guaranteed, it's very likely you'll be offered a shop in the middle of every biome. Asphodel has the highest chance of not getting an offer because Asphodel is much shorter. What are you hunting? Okay, we can do the attack. The yarn would have been good for that Hermes, yes. What's the likelihood of getting Hermes before Artemis? Kind of hard to say. Don't get baited by exit wounds. We're trying to build up for Mirage here. It's no use. Ugh. Makes you based? I don't even know what that means. Y'all are y'all are just blinded by the greed. That's all it is. Chaos gate here. I don't even need to look at the doors then. Hello? Can't do that. We want to be a little careful with our money. That's probably worth it. Centaur soul, not so much. Probably not the trap shard. Let me have it. <sighs> Side hustle is worth it if you're an asphodel. Definitely not for a speed run or a high heat run. <laughs> Definitely not worth it. You just don't need that much money. You just don't need that much money. Once you, when, especially once you have all the meta currencies, this is bad. Bard just to slow this mini boss by a lot. Just bad luck though. So we're not gonna make here. If your build is not coming together until you have access to the stick shop, then you have then you have more problems than earning a lot of money. Is one way of looking at it. The alternatives to side hustle are just too strong. Also, that's the bigger thing. The alternative to side hustle. I accept this message. What you could be getting. Ooh. Instead of it, uh, is massive, really. Because if you get hyper sprint rush delivery, that's just worth so much more. It's just worth so much more. Quick reload in the legendary. You can only get two Hermes Poons in most runs, three if you get one in sticks. So if you're wasting one on side hustle, it's it's gonna it's not gonna pay it's not gonna pay for it. You gotta keep that in mind. You'd agree if I didn't have an epic one there. All right, what's your fastest time, friend? <laughs> you think the money would have made me faster? I don't need. I have three hundred and seventy-four dollars and nothing to spend it on. I'm telling you, you don't have to believe me, but. I have no use for this, but we don't want to spend the roll. Not now. Look, now I ha I'm going to have even more money. If you just like getting it to have big number money, go ahead. That's fine. You can't. You can't tell me it's better. You can't tell me it's better. Hello. More cast. Since I have so much money, I guess I'm gonna buy the nail. The last chamber. Fuck it, buy it all. Not not great use of money though. Alright, that's gonna be Mirage Shot guaranteed, right? Have you come up with one? <laughs> Here's more money. Yay! In the name of Hades. We have to roll. That's not that's not worth it. I it's so it's very bad. Ugh. It's very bad that we did not get a, po a single palm on the cast. It's actually astoundingly bad. <sighs> Wouldn't palm be better there? I guess not when uh, Poseidon's nat natty on the door like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Really bad luck. 
They actually had thought to take the special just to fill the slot. That way you won't get offered special boons again, but it's not a big deal. We had some good luck. We had some bad luck, really. Instead of getting like that Dionysus call, I wish we had gotten a Palm, you know what I mean? Save in the call for when we have all the heads. Ow, 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 ow. All right. Uber, thank you so much for the gift sub. Hmm, gimme. So, okay, so first, before we change keepsakes here, any questions about that fight? <laughs> uh, oh, oh God, that's really tempting, I gotta say. All right, I think we do Charons here. And we just pray that Artemis or Poseidon will show up. I could put on Poseidon's keepsake to try to get Mirage shot. But we just do Bone Hourglass, I think, here. Especially when we cast damage right there. The Nemesis Crest is a bit expensive and probably not worth it. All right, I pick up the Gemstones. They don't do anything for me. Having the Hermes keepsake also opens up the Legendary. That's true. Okay, so we have greater haste. That was the best we could do from Hermes. Kind of an interesting choice here. What could help the run more? Rush delivery or like twin shot, triple shot? Probably one of those hammers. Yeah, yeah, twin shot and triple shot is still really, really, really strong here for us. It'll help. Both are good. I guess it's probably more likely we get something of use from uh, something. from this than from Hermes, is the way I'm looking at it. Point blank shot is okay. And now that Chaos Curse is over, so we have even more cast damage. Uh, so Hermes, we, there was really only two boons that we'd want, Rush Delivery or Quick Reload. And it just feels like the likelihood is not that great. Uh... Don't need money, but I guess we're going to choose that. We don't need help either. We're getting really unlucky not being offered palms. Hold the fire over power shot, okay? Uh, I don't understand. Do 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 do. Come on. Ah. Not yet. Something I can use. Okay, so we have Karen's keepsake on. Increase how long we hold on to this crap. Just what I need. <laughs> not the best things, but again, we have plenty of money. We'd not, we're not interested in Dionysus, and you can never skip the mid-chop. If you skip the mid-chop, you will not be offered it again. And Mirage Shot. That, come in useful. that stinks. Kind of a tough choice. Flurry is a... Flurry, if the question is about Flurry Shot, yeah, Flurry Shot is what we have right now. It's very, 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 very strong. This is actually kind of a slightly tough choice. No, you probably just do Hunter's Mark. Hunter's Mark is very strong. It's probably one of the strongest singular boons in the game, assuming you have some chance to crit in some way. Exit wounds, the damage will often get missed out upon. It does lead to the legendary, but Hunter's Mark does more right now. Where are the palms, Charon? We didn't get Mirage Shot. 
And this is the last mini boss offering. So Tartarus has three possible mini bosses. So does Asphodel. Elysium has two. So if you see two mini boss doors in Elysium, second one is the last one. If you get both at the same time, those are the only two options. Uh, same thing in Tartarus and Asphodel. So if you saw three, that's all the only thing you're you're gonna get. Exit wounds is helpful versus bosses, not as much as Hunter's Mark. It kind of just depends. Think about Hunter's Mark with the hero fight. I missed somehow? Do 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 do. Got you, bull man. In the name of hmm. nothing here is meaningful. Probably fill a slot. I'm not really worried about dying. No use. Only one exit. We didn't get Eurydice, Boldy, or Patty in the run. We got one offered, but. It's kind of unlucky in some ways, lucky in others, but that's probably how it goes. You get some luck, but not all the luck. Like that, those chaos uh, bonuses are great, but zero palms on the cast still. Ah! Fill the slots. It's not usually worth considering unless you're trying to go for something particularly difficult here. All right, again, we don't do trials, so it's a pretty easy choice here. A lot of people might look at uh, me not getting, what's it called, Mirage Shot and say, oh, it's because uh, it keeps offering you the special boom, but correlating it like that doesn't really make sense. Honestly, it's not usually worth considering. You fill a slot if there's nothing better. Yay! Look at the massiveness of that damage boost. Guess we do Aphrodite. Yay! Nice place. Fountain room. Dying Lament, I guess. Dying Lament's okay. Kind of gives you a little bit more AoE. We still have tons of money. I still kind of just want to palm the cast, but we don't have Mirage Shot. We have so many boons, it might be tough to palm it. Yeah, it's just a, that palm was just so such a big deal. Maybe we'll get a palm and a boon from the shop here. 701 is okay. <gasps> Hit that first. Hit the cast? Into Mirage Shot. See, chat, like the game just doesn't give me what I want ever. I'm sitting here rolling the dice, getting screwed over left and right. Not fair at all, I tells you. Oh, should I have read what Mirage Shot does for chat? All right, so you go for the bull first, kind of. Then you uh, try to hug Theseus here. Because the bull will come to you. The bowl will come to you, Theseus will walk away from you. So you stick with Theseus, basically, and try to make the bowl keep coming to you. And boom. <laughs> uh, I didn't really get to talk about everything, but that happened right there. But okay, the big thing here at the start of this fight is the Meg. So Meg always drops perpendicular to the way Zag is facing. So as the fight starts, tap up on a D-pad or an arrow key, directly up, don't use your joystick, then hit the Meg button. Wait like a half a second to make sure Meg starts to drop in the right direction. And then you can start the battle. Until next time, good shade. New PB? Oh no, our new PB was already completed like 30 plus seconds ago. Mirage Shot is not bugged on this aspect. So Mirage Shot gives you 30, a second uh, hit from your cast that deals 30% damage. These extra hits are kind of important because they can help bypass things like armor too. Or if you have damage control on. Hmm, none of these are great. We never got a second Hermes. Hmm. We don't want to waste money on a Centaur Soul. These aren't worth it. You also got to bear in mind that the small chambers and sticks count toward these. 
the small chambers count. If we get a two sack, then we might get it. Then they might stick to the Hades fight, but it's not, it's probably not worth it in this instance. Uh, we don't really have a better keepsake to swap to in this instance, though, so we probably just leave Charon's on. The best you could do is, like, I don't know, Meg's keepsake? Mom Pom is almost never worth it, really. It's just too random. He doesn't have armor? Ads do, but I guess it's more so about the thought if there were cast damage here. Alright, so when it comes to the two sack, it's again. just random. You could get it on the second path, you could get it on the fifth path. It's about a 54% chance of getting it on the second path. We recommend that you do the mini bosses first, because especially if you're doing a speedrun build. Definitely no anvil. I'm pausing to look at the shop and think about it. No Aphrodite either. The best we could do is like Heartrend. It's not that great. I will buy this big palm, but honestly, Always a pleasure, ugh, terrible. It's probably not worth it most of the time. Or something like that. Here's the second Hermes, okay. You do the mini bosses first, they just go faster than having to wait for enemies to spawn. You don't want to have to wait for enemies to spawn. Okay. Just loading the cast. I'm not even getting to shoot them half the time here. Do, 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 do. Quickly drop the Meg. Meg might have missed, but either way, it's dead, right? <laughs> hey, there it is. Rush D live. 75% bonus damage from your move speed. We currently have 40%, so it's not massive. If we have hyper sprint, it would have been a lot more. The meta still to almost always skip the skip stick shot. Yeah, I mean, you almost always do. Well, it kind of just depends on a few things. Like, if you already had all the luck in earlier in the run, and when it comes to building, making your build, then you just don't need it most of the time. And if you watch, like, the world record runs, they're not going to use it because it's a world record. They had everything they needed before they saw sticks. You know what I mean? Don't do anything. What damage does rush delivery increase? All damage. Literally all of it. That's why it's so good. I'm just gonna skip the last palm there. Boom! We got lucky. We got the two sack. This should be well under 10 minutes. Might be under 9, but it's gonna be close. Rush delivery plus hyper sprint bonus only work immediately after dashing. Yes. So only while you actually have the move speed bonus. You can also get plus speed from the Caron Wells. Oh, hi, father. Clickbait if I beat the game under nine. The truth is, there's a lot of RNG there. Like a three sack alone probably adds like 40 seconds uh, to the in-game timer here. And that's basically losing a 50 50. All right, we're going to drop Meg right away. And we're going to hop in and we're just going to pray that dad does not teleport too, too much here on us. Uh, see, that's what you hope he doesn't do, but not much you can do about it. I will kind of take some pot shots at the other enemies here to help build up Paul, but I'm not going to think too hard about it. We're mostly just going to be a damage sponge while we try to kill bad. We definitely have enough damage. There's instances where you might not have enough. If you lose the death defiance, you don't really lose time. Because it the uh, in-game timer slows down. And then you hug dad while he's doing the lasers and you're done. Under nine minutes. Boom. <laughs> Any big questions when it comes to saving time in Hades? I, I probably missed some things. But I'm not certain what they were, there. honestly. Room choices are the most important thing. And of course your build too. is gonna matter a lot. But if you do if you follow the steps for the build, it's easier. But I worry that I didn't give clear directions when it comes down to 
uh, room choices. We lasers don't hit you if you're on top of them. Correct. As long as it's not extreme measures four. Talk about how you can hug dad. Yeah, you can hug dad uh, during the lasers uh, as long as extreme measures four is not on. Don't think you can play that fast. If you follow the control setup, it's not that bad, honestly. Fountain room's predictable? No, completely random. You can see where an event room is. That's Boldy, Eurydice, and Patty uh, up ahead, right? But it's random if they show up. How long, how long would I recommend you wait until the build comes together? For a run like this, so you'd put on, you'd get Crush Shot Chamber 1. If you don't get Crush Shot Chamber 1, somehow you reset. 100%. Um... If you don't get Snow Burst and Tartarus, you probably put on Demeter's Keepsake for Asphodel. Uh, maybe you try to start to piece together Mirage Shot. If you don't get the right gods, then you just don't even bother going for it. Uh, uh, Snow Burst is really, really important for this build. It kind of just go by more so the time, really, while you get used to it, probably. Are you ahead of your own time, basically? Does that make sense? Low tolerance was useless. We had big cast damage there. Point blank shot did not do a whole lot here. Did okay. Crush shot, level three. Rush delivery, passive, 75% of 40%. There was some luck here, but not all the luck, obviously. Basic room choices go as follows for you. Go as followed. Go, okay, hold on, I'm trying to read. Go for your build only, never skip mid shop, try to get chaos when possible. Uh, three rooms are more important than uh, something that helps your build. So if you get offered something like Boldy, but the boon you want is on the right, you still take Boldy. You just save so much time by not, by, by not doing that enemy encounter. Way more important. Just put that put off the build. Uh, how highly do you try to dig for the arms legendary? Never. Don't even think about it. It's not really worth it usually. I mean, we didn't have it here and look at how it went. Why is snowburst so important? It's just the damage. The AOE is really big. 40 damage every time I hit the cast up. And you think about it, enemies are dying, so I'm constantly picking those casts back up, reloading them, hitting with snowburst again. It's really helpful in Elysium versus the little spawns. Is there a money back guarantee? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We also didn't get a survival room. I don't think we got a singular event room for this run. One, two, three. I think we got one fountain, maybe more than one. So the room luck, room luck was pretty bad. The build luck was quite high on this one, I say. World record is 516. Are there more strats than what you see here? There's very subtle strats uh, that it would be... Tough to get into in this moment, to say the least. Um, there's very small miniature time saves here and there. A lot of it, if you watch it, will come down to luck, though, and getting the right rooms at the right times and then the right boons at the right times. Yeah, you can do this with anything. You could get this. To, oh, yeah, you can easily. If you go to speedrun.com and you start to narrow down by the weapons and the aspects, every aspect is well. Un the world record for every aspect is well under this time. It's, it's, I mean, so this game, when it comes to speedrunning, it's not like Celeste, right? Where if you just learn more jumps and dashes and things like that, you will go faster. There's a, there's just a certain point where learning more will not necessarily help. You know what I mean? There is a certain a point where you kind of just got to grind out the luck if you really want to get times that fast. Nevertheless, I believe every single person in this chat could get under 10 minutes. I 100% believe it. Mention enemy strength based on type, and you said you would come back to it. So, uh, how many enemies you get in a chamber is based on their difficulty rating and which chamber number you are on in that biome. Uh, so, ideally, you want enemies that have a high difficulty rating. So, that way you get fewer spawns. So, you have fewer enemies, but tougher enemies, quote-unquote. The thing is, the difficulty rating for each enemy is kind of wonky. So, in Elysium... Armored witches have a very high difficulty rating, even though their health is minuscule, because I guess they're meant to be a difficult enemy, right? They have very little health, 
but their difficulty rating is really high. So you really want to see Armored Witches late in Elysium to make it go by a lot faster. Survivor runs past the timer? Yes. Seeded versus unseeded. Does seeded mean it's manipulated before you start, or do you do the strat, or you do strats to manipulate as go? It's manipulated before you start, basically. Uh, seeded is a whole nother topic, I'd say. That's kind of tough. Where you would have to do trial and error to find out what every single room is going to be offered based on your actions. Then you restart and you perform those actions just as you want to make sure you get offered the exact things in front of you. So in other words, uh, seeded runs know exactly what's going to happen ahead of them, but not because... You know, if you do a, a loop-de-loo in chamber number two, you'll get a twin shot hammer every time or something like that. But because they know that hitting that particular pot on this particular seed in this particular run in this particular chamber will make the hammer offer certain things. Yeah, you, you have to map out the entire run. Best spear strat? Uh, Achilles, get flurry jab, hammer. Dave's coming to help with that. Yeah, there's some mods that help uh, plot it out. You like Nice Dan who explains things? You don't like Mean Dan who shouts at chat? <laughs> uh... You can't just enter a CDS Explorer? Correct. But that's not that, that's not that crazy, really. Because you just find something with a good chamber one, like, you know, epic cast in a chaos gate, and then you go from there kind of thing. Fast packs my PB with? Probably Hera. It's Hera, right? The last time we PB'd in game time was a long time ago, though. Apparently, it's over by now. Well, I like answering these questions, especially the more advanced questions. Not so much the questions that are like, which god is the most fuckable or something like that. Were I quiet enough for the call? I don't know. What's a heat? That was a funny one. <laughs> uh, 